Okay, good morning. Uh, I think uh, uh, our friend is uh, fixing the <laughs> computer. Thanks for coming. I know this is a precious Saturday morning and uh, many of you may be, you know, actually wanting to catch the Olympic and see Michael Schooling. Michael Schooling. Joseph Schooling. <laughs> uh, win his historic the Olympic medals uh, or go around catching your Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, but thanks for coming. Um, yeah, I'm Tekhua. I, I uh, was asked to share my cancer uh, surviving journey. I, I'm not quite a veteran, actually, just uh, you know, beginning uh, in this phase of... and still continuing fighting it, uh, because uh, it's a lifelong battle in a certain sense. Um, but I'm glad to be here, and I hope uh, my sharing will be of some help to some of you, or your family member or friends who may be uh, going through some of this uh, at this time. Hey. Anyway, I think just now, uh, you know, our colleague from Tan Tok Seng, Sandy, shared about food. I think there's something very important. I just want to maybe just start on that. that you know, when you have cancer um, and you are doing chemo and we have stomach cancer and, you know, I have the 85% of my stomach removed, uh, you know, eating is quite different. <laughs> and uh, especially during chemo phase, um, you know, there are things that uh, we're told that we should or should not eat. And, um, and I think one thing that my wife did uh, during my chemo phase was you know, to eat healthily. So we have steamed fish almost every single meal. <laughs> so you can you imagine st having steamed fish for lunch, dinner, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday. Uh, so things get... You know, and when you are having chemo, food tastes very different. It's, you have no taste. It's like plastic. It's like eating plastic. You know, you, so, uh, so I think it's um, important to, to be creative and, and flexible in, in, in your uh, preparation of meals when you are going through that phase. Yeah? Um, otherwise, after a few days of that kind of so-called healthy diet, uh, I feel like giving up. <laughs> You know, and, and you need to eat and to, to help your body find the nutrients. Anyway, um, that was one of the pictures I took when I was, uh, after I was diagnosed with cancer. So one of the things I, I really thought was wonderful was I have a lot more time, <laughs> all right? Um, so I went around uh, taking pictures and uh, enjoying nature photography, which I never had. And this was a picture I took at the uh, Changi uh, village. So I just, if there's anything that I hope you can uh, go back with is really like what Dr. Andrew and Dr. Asim have uh, mentioned is uh, early detection is probably one of the best things you can do for yourself if, if you're unfortunate to you know, contract cancer. Because really, uh, me standing here is to tell you that really cancer is not a death sentence um, and you can live a very full life after uh, battering cancer. It's very possible. In fact, I'm back to work, uh, not uh, you know 50 percent, but uh, in fact, I, th I think my colleague forgot that I <laughs> did this before. Uh, you know, work is back to 100 percent. In fact, sometimes 150 percent, 200 percent. So you can, you can. It's not that it's a good thing to go back to work in that kind of pace, but uh, what I'm trying to say is it's very possible for one who have cancer uh, to so survive and, and live a, a normal life. By the way, I have uh, stage 3 cancer, so uh, according to the statistic that Andrew shared with you, um, I shouldn't be here. Or at least 50% of the people, less than 50% of the people will be here, you know, after this uh, cancer. But thank God I'm here and I'm here to share with you as well. So my, my, my talk will be briefly in this, uh, I mean, I was, shared, I was told to share about my journey in diagnostic. Um, you know, my treatment and my recovery phase. So I'll share with you the, you know, the importance of fast response, uh, the, I mentioned flexible diets, and how family and fun time playing Pokemon may help, I don't know. Uh, focus on the good things and, and uh, first I want to say some disclaimer. Every one of us, every cancer patient is unique. Uh, what I experience does not represent what every other cancer patient will go through. So uh, to say, oh, I heard this uh, person, this talk, and then he did this, and you know, you can do this, or uh, you know, um, no, I think uh, everyone is different, um, and it's always good to talk to the doctor if you're not sure, um, and and be empathetic and sympathetic with your friends or your loved one or yourself, you know, uh, 
because it is you're all very different, right? Second is um, I'm not associated with any of the hospital or the, the 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 sponsor, okay? So I'm not obligated to say anything they may want to hear. Um, so uh, first sign, uh, I think the Dr. Asi mentioned about this uh, dark stool, this char, this is the one. So on, in October 2012, I, I first, I mean, there was no symptom. And one thing bad or good about stomach cancer is that you can go on having that cancer without any symptom. And I was feeling well, I have no loss of appetite that Dr. Asim talked about. I have no loss of weight and nothing. And really, I was happy, I was doing everything else. The only sign I had was this thing called black stool. So I, you know, to, to, in today's technology, you can Google, you can always ask Dr. Google anything you want. And so I Google about what's black stool. He said, oh, maybe, you know, you eat charcoal bread, you eat uh, blueberries and stuff like that. So maybe, you know, and I just had my executive health screening, I did my stool test. So I said, nothing to worry. But, you know, I was, had, I was having a flu and I, I went to see a doctor and they say, by the way, I, I have this black stool. You know, I, I took a picture of my black stool. I showed it to the GP and the GP said, this doesn't look good. You should see a specialist. So, uh, so well, my wife helped me to arrange uh, an appointment with a specialist. And, you know, to, to see a specialist uh, in the local public hospital, it took some time. So in October, my first appointment to see a specialist was in January. So, um, but what the GPTs told me is that, don't worry, if there's something, you know, uh, you're bleeding in the stool or you have something, you know, abnormal, go A&E and they will, you know, check you out immediately. So, but, you know, being optimistic, I don't think that I need that. Lah. I mean, probably something minor, you know, it will go away. And things did go away. The black stool will come back every day, you know, and I thought I was okay. So, in fact, I was thinking of cancelling my uh, January appointment. But my wife said, no, we must go and check it out. And uh, then, so I went to see the, the, the specialist in January and uh, showed him the picture of the black stool. He said, it doesn't look good. Uh, I need to do an endoscopy. He said, wow, oh, you know. So, and he said, can I do it like almost like next day? I said, but I have a, a, a you know, meeting coming up and, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things in my work, you know. Uh, so, so I said, can be later or not? And uh, the nurse said, hey, you will be considered very lucky. You know, this Dr. Ang uh, Ting Leong is the, the, the head of the department. He's willing to do it for you and you still want to uh, check your schedule, whether you've got time to uh, let him do it. And he's going for his reservice. So, you know, unwillingly, <laughs> I, 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 I sort of uh, decided to go for the endoscopy. In fact, I was having an endoscopy in the afternoon. In the morning, I was attending a meeting. I was fasting and, you know, and, and such to, I think, show that actually going for endoscopy is very easy, you know. There's not much things that you need to do, really, except to fast. And, you know, so I could still go on my regular work in the morning, fasted. In the afternoon, I, I went to do the endoscopy and, you know, just, you know, it's very simple. I think many of you have done that, you know. It's just stay true and uh, wake up and you're yeah, well and you're, you, you back, go back to work the next day. So that's, uh, I done the endoscopy quite quickly. Um, so two weeks later, I received a phone call, a missed call from the hospital. And um, so the nurse said, ah, Dr. I want to see you. Uh, don't worry, you come next morning, you'll see you first thing in the morning. Don't worry, there's no payment involved. Uh, <laughs> when, when someone talks to you like that, you make you a little bit worried. Um, so, um, so I went to see Dr. Ang and, 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 and uh, that's where the, the bad news came and uh, he told me that I have cancer. And I asked him, so what, 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 what can I, you know, what, what can I look forward to? What can I tell my office colleague? You know, there's many things to do. You know, I, I have a minister coming to visit and, and you know, host him and, and do all sorts of things. You know, I got work to do, you know, but you see, the worst case scenario is that you have three months to live. The best case scenario is that you go for your surgery, you go for a treatment, and you may recover fully. So, worst case scenario, three months to live. So, what do I do? You know, I went back to the office this same day in the afternoon, I told my boss straight away, and uh, they say, you can just go home and do what you need to do. So it's interesting. The first time in my life, I feel work, 
you know, all the deadlines, all the minister visit, all the assignment, all not important. <laughs> Just, you know, clean up my desk and uh, I, 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 I go and then I start to wonder what, what I need to do. If I have three months to live, you know, do I have enough money, you know, um, you know, for my, I have three children, they are still schooling. Um, so that was, you know, uh, quite, you know, I must say that I was sad. There were times in my, in my quiet moments, I was in tears. It's tough, right? Um, but I was very grateful for very good support and uh, Dr. Ang immediately arranged for me to see Dr. Andrew within the same week and arranged for CT scan to be done and, and they, they you know, uh, start to tell us what might be the, the, the challenges and, and things like that. So Dr. Andrew uh, shared and he shared just now as well, right, that uh, the gold standard in uh, treatment for gastric cancer is actually surgery. And um, so when I have this cancer and a lot of good friends will tell me, hey, you must go to uh, SGH. Because you know why? SGH stands for sure go home. <laughs> <laughs> um, go, go CGH because can't go home. <laughs> so, um, so a lot of good friends advise me, don't go CGH, you know. But I want to tell you that I, 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 I have a very present experience in CGH. I decided to go in CGH as a public patient, even though my company could uh, put me on an A-class. Uh, Dr. Andrew took me on as a public patient, and uh, he volunteered to uh, even come back during his uh, reservist to operate on me. So I think in Singapore, we're very fortunate to have a very good uh, public uh, hospital infrastructures, public healthcare staff who really care for the patient, whether you're a private patient or public patient, you can be assured of first-class treatment. And I think that's, that's something that is very fortunate for us and for us Singaporeans uh, to be able to enjoy this kind of uh, public health care. And that, to me, was one of the very important things that uh, make a difference in my quick uh, treatment and recovery. So, um, so that's uh, a share about my reaction and things like that. And, uh, you know, of course, one of the things that, would, that uh, any patients the most worry about would be really the, the family. And uh, so Dr. Andrew said, when do you want to get operated on? You know, it's Chinese New Year coming up. You know, if you go for this date, uh, you will have to prepare to spend your Chinese New Year in the hospital. Um, you know, and sometimes Chinese bring pang tang. Uh, you know, you want to not stay in the hospital in the Chinese New Year. But I decided, well, you know, time is essence and I want to get it done with quickly as soon as possible and I took the first date available even though I have to stand uh, my, my new year in the hospital. But one of the things that once you have this uh, so-called cancer, life around you, you know, things look very different. When I first uh, took a walk in the park, the, the trees look greener, the air smells fresher, the flower looks, you know, and you know, it's like, you, it's like you have a breath, uh, it's a, the, like a brand new life given to you, you know. Knowing that you only may have only three months to live, every moment counts. Every moment is so precious. Um, the bird looks beautiful, you know, and things like that. So that was a picture taken after my surgery. Um, it was a long surgery. My wife was very, very nervous. Um, uh, was, she was very nervous when uh, Dr. Andrews was describing the procedure. One thing that, you know, uh, Dr. Andrews said, you know, we may have to have my stomach removed and her jaws almost dropped. No stomach, how to, <laughs> you know. But uh, thankfully, you know, he later explained that actually without a stomach, you can survive. You don't have to carry a bag around. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, after four hours of surgery, you know, uh, my wife took this picture to, to assure my friends, my family members that I'm well and, uh, and I wanted them to go home. You know, it's, uh, it's a long day for them. So, there's a picture taken uh, after the surgery. And, uh, Thank God, uh, you know, we, a lot of my friends prayed for a uh, uh, miraculous healing, but that did happen. But I was uh, very glad that the, 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 the recovery was fantastic. It was very fast. Within, you know, a few days, I was well, and uh, I was able to, 
you know, almost uh, leave the hospital. I said that I have a lot of bags with me and the doctor said I cannot go out, you know, uh, with those bags on. So, next I was uh, asked to go for the chemo, which I think Dr. Andrew mentioned as well. And I think this is something that's very useful and I really think that uh, if the doctors or oncologists recommend, I think it's something that's worthwhile because it gives you the assurance that at least, you know, reduce the chances of the recurrence. It is tough, but uh, it is really important. And I just want to quickly mention, I think uh, Sandy had mentioned the importance of food. I wouldn't say that. Um, but there's a myth that uh, many people say, hey, you know, you try this Chinese medicine or this alternative medicine. Don't worry, you know, don't tell your oncologist. You know, as long as you take it three hours apart, you know, they don't uh, meet in the stomach, it's okay. But actually, not true, uh, because they don't meet in the stomach, they meet in the bloodstream, you know. So, uh, you know, the... Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that it's alternative medicine is bad, but you need to talk to the uh, oncologist and doctor because the, some of this uh, medication are having the same intent. And you may have double dosage of the, the medicine that, you know, and, and, and that might do you harm. So be very open with your oncologist, talk to them, they know something about what you're doing, and uh, always have this trust in your, your healthcare staff. Uh, because food is uh, very important in, in, in helping you recover uh, well. And of course, the, the people that make a difference in my life are my friends, my family. And without them, I, I don't think I, I could you know, uh, go through the very painful treatment. Um, and you know, there will be challenges. I mean, talk to the doctors. I mean, I had a lot of uh, problem with the chemo, nausea, vomiting. It's very bad feeling when you have to go through that. But uh, you know, talk to the doctors. You know, the medication they help to reduce the nausea and vomiting. And you know, the first time the medicine doesn't work, they give you a second type, and third type. You know, and uh, you will find one that help you. So uh, I'm I'm a Christian. So um, you know, one of the things that I really find helpful that you know, having faith, having God to journey with you, and somehow you know, it, you know, for me, God seems to be reminding me that hey, this is time I want you to wait on me and and and. So when I took my park, uh, a walk in the park, I look up, hey, there's an eagle that reminds me, hey, God say, wait on him, you know, and I will renew your strength and things like that. And I see the flower and I see the birds, they remind me that, hey, you know, if I look after the flower, I look after the birds, you think I don't, I'm not able to look after you? So, you know, my journey, uh, I think, you know, with this constant reminder in the nature walk and, uh, reminds me that God cares for me and that makes a difference in my recovery as well. Um, engage some fun time. I think it's very important. You know, I'm not saying you should go play God Pokemon. Find a good, uh, meaningful hobby. You know, learn. I, I what that what I did was you know, I, I picked up uh, ukulele, natural nature photography. One of the things that Andrew said, you know, there's only so much Korean drama you can watch. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think it's uh, you know, helpful to find yourself some engaging, fun time to do because you do have time. You you're not going to be able to go back to work for. A few months. For me, it's about eight months. And be 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 thankful. Count your blessing. There are a lot of things you can be, you know, uh, looking at. I mean, you can look at the statistics. Say only twenty percent survive. You know, uh, or, or eighty percent will, will not live through the three to five years. But you can also look at it. Hey, you know, the twenty percent could survive, and you could be the twenty percent. So, um, but there are a lot of things that we can be thankful for. So, in summary, these are uh, uh, things that I've shared with you. And uh, some final words, uh, you know, life can be beautiful, you know. I mean, I, I took this picture when I was in the nature walk. You saw this uh, butterfly with a broken wing, you know. I think once, you know, even with that broken wing, the butterfly is, can continue to live a very interesting life, a very beautiful life. So, once broken but not necessarily, you know, uh, you know destroyed. And, uh, you know, if anything uh, I want to share with you is that, and all things that please us are for, for a moment, and all things that troubles us are sometimes just for a moment. I mean, the, when you go through those difficult times, it, it's just for a moment. But what that really matters are what things that's for eternal. And I think family, friends, and those are very precious things. So I wish you a good life and a healthy life. Thank you.